Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and you've seen this scene before. This is Scenescapes. I introduced it about a week ago. And I told you at the time I was going to show you how I did this, a workflow to be able to create multiple uh, poses and uh, facial expressions for characters and have it be con uh, have some continuity between them. So like our rogue here, having her be able to laugh or sit down or look dour, things like that. Really important if you want to be able to drop your players into a scene like this. And so what we're going to do is go through mid-journey. This is uh, one of the characters I created. I'm going to show you the workflow for how I did this. You can see you can make top-down tokens and different views and poses. And I've created some tools for you guys to make this even a little bit easier for you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to find, this is just a free-to-use image I found on the internet of a samurai. We're going to download it, and then we're going to upload it into MidJourney. And then we're going to go here. This is a special spreadsheet that I made. I'll link to it in the description. And what it does is it just turns it into a formula, the prompt that you're going to use. And so and I've made some changes to this that you'll see afterwards. But we basically want to describe this person, their age, gender. Um, I'll end up combining those, some other parts about them. Everything in green you can type in. Everything in white will just copy what you typed in in green. And this is all the different kinds of poses and things that I've created that you might want to do yourself. So we're going to start with, you know, their, uh, what they look like and their, you know, what they're wearing. And we're going to end up concatenating all these together into a single phrase, right? So what are they wearing? Mix of leather and metal armor, style of Japanese samurai. What are they holding? In some cases, you don't want them holding anything. And in others, you want two katana swords, in my case be one mace, that kind of thing. And then the action, like what are they doing? Standing, sitting, kneeling, um, you know, with some sort of aspect or look on their face, that kind of thing. The setting is always going to be on a white background. And then the style you can change as well if you want to play around with different styles. We're going to copy the final result into mid-journey. And then we're going to make sure we select this little button here. That's to use our image as a character reference. Okay. You can also, we're going to, what we're going to do here is generate these images. So Majiri is going to give us four options and you can see it's already given us a bit of continuity here. And I think I like this one. So what we're going to do, if we like it, we're going to upscale it. We're going to do the subtle upscale and that's going to give us a more high res version of that. It's going to be about uh, 2048 by 2048. Um, and once that's upscaled, we're actually going to download this image and we're going to use this as our reference image going forward. So, uh, now we'll, uh, go back to our prompt template and let's grab the next prompt. So let's grab, um, let's see, standing and looking to the left, right? Holding two swords again in this this one, this works. So we'll go pop it back in and we've uploaded our reference image. We are going to do the same thing. We're going to uh, click um, the character reference. We're not going to select anything else style or image. And you can see it generates these new versions, right? These are pretty cool. I might even use a couple of these, right? So anything that I like, I'm going to upscale it. And I'm just imagining the scenes that I might drop this into. And it's it's also nice to get some where they're like not even looking at the camera, but looking away. Now, let's say that it's cut off slightly. We do want the entire image. So we're going to the editor and we just scale it back one tick. And that'll help make sure that the image gets entirely into the picture. It'll give us some variations, which just changes this man bun a little bit. And once we find the one that we like, we will uh, upscale that. And we'll come in here to some more. This one, we're not going to be holding anything. We just want a relaxed posture, uh, expression of great joy. You can come in here and change all these things as much as you want. Um, you know, create other kinds of images. We're going to use our same reference image. Um, we're going to click the little button to make sure that it's character reference. And let's just look at our upscales we have so far. Yet this is pretty good. Feels like we've got some good continuity of our character. And let's see what it generated. Some of these are silly. Some of them are kind of interesting. Let's, all right. I just, I love it, right? It's just, he's really laughing. I think this really brings out this personality. Maybe this character um, also has a really, you know, great sense of humor. 
And let's keep going. Um, let's look for, here's just a warm, friendly smile, right? So this might just be like a standard go-to image that we want to put in a lot of places. So we're going to do the same thing we've been doing, paste it, make our reference image, um, uh, character reference, and we'll see what it generates. And let's keep going. Now let's have this person sitting down because we might want to have them sitting in some scenes, right? So uh, we'll paste that. Same thing with reference image. I'm skipping a lot of these steps just because they're all repetitive, but I'm doing the same thing. Paste the new prompt, uh, apply the character reference. And here, I like this one. We'll go into the editor and just knock it back a tick just to get that, that bun and foot into the shot. And it'll give us some nice ones. Oh, here's some of the sitting ones that we've generated. I love this. That's a great one. Uh, just love the melancholy resting look. It's fantastic. This one, he's sitting directly on the ground. I think that might be valuable. I might end up using these. You can create as many of these as you want. And I'll go through, I'll skip a lot of my other creation. I'm just kind of running some of those other prompts and creating things. Uh, just doing a little bit. Let's see if I can get one with the buns just in the shot. By the way, you do want, if you're going to generate these and you're going to um, use mass edit for scenescapes, you want their feet to be as close to the bottom of the, of the image as possible. It don't have to be exactly there, but the closer, the better. Um, just when you start placing it into the scenes, it'll make more sense. And by the way, you may also need a top-down token. And it's not the easiest thing to do in mid-journey, but we're going to place a, a couple of those, those final prompts were top-down token prompts. And so you can see here, it's generated a pretty good starting top-down token. Some of them have weird AI artifacts. But the problem with all of these is that the player is like looking up at the camera and you can see in the prompt, I actually do some things to try to avoid that. We're going to try to force uh, the, the player's face to look somewhere else. So we're going to select the whole face and then we're going to go into the original prompt uh, prompt. So it says facing the ground, looking down. Those didn't work. So we're going to add a little bit more to it and see if we can force it. Looking down away from the camera is what we'll add. And we'll click submit. And here's the results. You can see this is much better. So he's like looking away. He's not looking directly at the camera anymore. So one of these is probably, probably this one is a pretty good one to use. This will be a lot smaller on the screen. But again, this is just to keep that character continuity, even if you're playing a top-down token within your scene. Of course, you can always use um, their profile view. But uh, let's... Okay, so now let me show you what we've got. So we downloaded all of the scaled up pictures, but we need to get rid of this white background. So I'm going to show you the free free way, and this is the difficult and lame way, but I'll show you anyway, just in case you want to do it. We're using GIMP. You can use any image editor, and we're trying to select all the white space. I'm holding down shift using the magic selector, you know, whether using Photoshop or Clip Studio, they all have the same thing. I'm going to select any white space, even the space between his hair. Um, the space between the arms, between the fingers, any any white space at all. We'll get a layer and then transparency, and we'll say color to alpha. That takes all the lightest colors and makes them transparent. Darkest colors leaves them dark. And you can see we got rid of the background, but there's still some fragments of white left. So I'm going to show you the better way. Go to remove.bg, remove background, upload your picture there. And you can download a 500 by 500 pixel version, which isn't bad. You can see it just it uses AI and gets rid of all the white background. If you just spring for a couple of bucks, you can download, you can buy some credits and download these in HD uh, size, or basically the original size that you uploaded them in. So I recommend this as kind of the best way to do it. There's also a bulk editing tool that you can um, basically remove the backgrounds of everything all at once. Uh, it's just part of your your paid subscription or whatever. Okay, so now we've got all of our images with the background removed. Let's give them all names. I'm just going to say human barbarian pose one, you know, pose two, pose three, and we'll just, you know, label them all that way. I'll probably call the top down. I'm going to put these in a certain order. Maybe I want all the sitting ones together, so I'll change the order. And then my top down token, I'm just going to put token in there. That way I, I can search for it later. Now I'm going to open up Clip Studio. Again, you can use GIMP or other things. I use Clip Studio. I'm going to go to the eraser tool and just some additions you can do. You don't have to do this. I'm going to just delete some of the 
shadows that might be hanging off over the edge of the image. And then uh, I'm going to do another thing here. These sitting ones, I'm going to import them because you can see they're not at the same scale. So I'm going to import them. I'm going to rescale them. I'm going to use the head of the original one just to get the scale proper. And there's one, and then I'll do the other one here as well. These are, this is entirely optional. You don't have to do this. You can always res resize it in Foundry uh, each time, but I just wanted them all the same size. All right, so that's about right. The same player, or the same character is about the right size sitting versus standing. This feels pretty good, okay? Yeah, these look right. I like how he's looking over to the side, get a little bit bigger. I'm going to move them down. I want those feet closer to the bottom. That's where the pixels are going to grab. So I want to, I want to get those feet down towards the bottom. That shadow is probably going to help as well. Yeah, I like that. All right. Now I'm going to rasterize these. That just means that making them so that they're editable, if you don't know that term. And then I'm just going to delete just a little bit of the shadow underneath them. If I don't delete the shadows, it'll create like a hard line at, when I... Uh, you know, actually see it in Foundry, and I don't want a hard line down there. I just want a little bit of shadow underneath them. You don't have to have shadows under them. You can leave it out entirely, but I kind of like it. it just kind of adds to their three-dimensionality, makes it look like they're really standing in the scene. And then I'm going to just go ahead and save these uh, and just right over top the, the originals. So now what I've done is I've made the images the exact same dimensions, just square dimensions. Um, and so I can just switch to a sitting position and not really have to make any other changes uh, within Foundry. Now what I want to do is I want to resize. So I've actually got everything but the token, the top-down token, selected. And I'm going to resize them from 2048 down to 1024. I don't think you really need bigger than 1024 within Foundry. And you don't want them to be too big. I'm going to make the top-down token actually even half that size, so 512 by 512. And then I'm using XN Convert. It's free, but I'm going to basically convert everything to a WebP version. This is going to cut down the size, like I do by 60%. This is going to cut down the size of the file by like 90%. So this is super convenient. You can see the percentages that it's shrinking it down by. This makes it so these are nice and efficient. All right, let's jump into Foundry and let's load all of our new images into Foundry, which I've done on the back end. I've just put them in my data folder. And let's open up one of the scenescapes that I gave you guys last week. We'll use the camp scene here. And yeah, this will be our starting point. So let's create a new actor. And we'll call this our, uh, our samurai. Player character. And let's go into edit mode here. And this is D&D &D 5e, if you haven't noticed. And let's pick, I don't know what we think his default portrait should be. That looks pretty good. And then let's go into the prototype token and just do the top-down token while we're in here. Uh, there's our top-down token. What's cool, you can make other versions of top-down token, one that they're not in combat or they're casting a spell. Um, okay, so this is pretty good. Uh, let's do one more thing. Let's edit it and come back into details and just say he's 6'1", because it'll actually, Mass Edit will actually use that to calculate how uh, their default height. And now we've got them in the scene. We drag them up next to everybody else. This is looking really great so far. Let's uh, play around with changing his pose. Yeah, I love this. I love this action pose. It's so good. Yeah, that's great. And you, know, you can move him around. Maybe he's a bad guy hiding behind a rock. You can actually do combat with these because they're actually tokens. We're manipulating tokens here. Um, yeah, this is feeling pretty good. And to be able to get this kind of continuity, thank God for AI, because I, I really don't know how else we could do it. Uh, feel free to suggest in the comments other ways that we might approach this problem. Oh, let's go to our tile layer and let's turn on pixel perfect hover. That's something that comes with mass edit. And now we can just hover over the pixels and it won't try to grab the in, entire token tile. I'm going to use alt and mouse wheel to size them just a little bit. Uh, get him to the right the right size. I want him just a little bit bigger than the guy behind him because he's more in the foreground. All right, that's looking pretty awesome. 
And that's it. We just created a new character and dropped him into a scene. Maybe that's an NPC that they're, you know, they found along the road. It just gives your players just a really cool way to really see these characters come alive. So let's drop our same samurai we just created and let's drop him into this new scene. Now he's in the city with the rest of our characters. And, you know, we can move him around. We can, let's change him to something else. pretty good yeah I like it and as we move him around we can press the H key and basically mirror him left and right so really kind of let him look whichever direction we want or postured in any particular direction and now we just get to set it up like see hanging out with his friend here you know are they just posed around the scene I can make a landing page with this stuff and have my whole group just in the middle and I can click on them and see their character sheets really really fun so let me know if this was helpful for you guys if you'd like me to do more tutorials like this and in the meantime have fun making your maps